Hello, hello! I'm gonna start up yet another series in my Raphael Verdung's world. This time we're going far in history to our ancient world. And I thought we might start this series up with a two-parter about what might be the very beginning of our civilization. In this first part we'll learn more about the Sumerians, while next week we'll talk in depth about the ones that may have created us in the first place the Anunnaki. The cradle of civilization is generally assumed to be in modern-day Iraq and Kuwait or ancient Mesopotamia. The southernmost region was called Sumer or the land of civilized kings in the Akkadian language. The Sumerians however called themselves the black-headed people and they had a written language called Suneiform script. In this script Sumer simply meant the land or the land of the black-headed people. Suneiform script, by the way, was a wedge-shaped writing system created for the boring reason of keeping accounts and records of business transactions, which then developed into a full-fledged writing system that was used for over a whopping 3000 years by more than a dozen different cultures. The Sumer region was long believed to be inhabited from around 4500 BC, but evidence has been unearthed that proves they moved from a hunter-gatherer society to an agrarian one prior to 5000 BC. The Ubaid people were the first agents of civilization in the region, and at what point the Sumerians entered the area is unknown. The Sumerians were, are credited with a lot of inventions like the wheel, writing, the sailboat, agricultural processes such as irrigation and the concept of the city. Amongst the most important were Eridu, Uruk, Ur, Larsa, Isin, Adab, Kula, Lagash, Nippur and Kish. And it is noted that they were founded at least as villages much earlier than 5000 BC by the Ubaid people. There was a subtle shift from priest king known as an Ensi to a more modern concept of king known as Lugal. During this time Sumerian city-states fought for control over arable land and water rights until the rise of the first dynasty of Lagash in 2500 BC. The kingship also arose this time and the city-states of Sumer became ruled by a single monarch who was assisted by a council of elders including both men and women. There is a Sumerian king list written by a scribe of the city of Lagash sometime around 2100 BC listing Etana of Kish as the first king. Etana is famous from the myth of the man who ascends to heaven on the back of an eagle and like other kings was known for superhuman feats and heroism. The list also includes Sumer's lone female monarch in the form of Kubaba, a woman tavern keeper who supposedly took the throne in the city-state of Kish sometime around 2500 BC. One thing worth mentioning also is the Epic of Gilgamesh, a 3000 line poem that follows the adventures of a Sumerian king as he battles a forest monster and quests after the secret of eternal life. Many now believe he is based on an actual king who served as the fifth ruler of the city of Uruk. They were well traveled trade merchants and yet boast a large city of Uruk of around 80,000 inhabitants, the largest at the time. A young man who later claimed to have been the king's gardener seized the throne. His name was Sargon of Akkad and he would found the Akkadian Empire, the first multinational empire in the world. After the Gutians invaded from the north, a dark age in Sumerian history began. The Gutians were considered a punishment sent by the gods. After that, they were there was the third dynasty of the city of Ur, the Sumerian Renaissance, that involved a lot of firsts in human civilizations like the first schools, the first proverbs and sayings, the first messiahs, the first Noah and the flood stories, the first love song, the first aquarium, the first legal precedence in court cases, the first tale of a dying and resurrected god, the first funeral chants, first biblical parallels and the first moral ideas. They also essentially invented time, that their sextagenimal system, counting ergo, created the 60 second minimum. 
minute and a 60 minute hour. They also divided the night and day up in periods of 12 hours, set a limit on a workday with a time for beginning and ending, and established the concept of days off for holidays. And better yet, they are credited with the invention of beer. Yes, they're my kind of people. The brewing techniques they, are, they used are still a mystery, but their preferred ale seems to have been a barley-based concoction so thick it had to be sipped through a special kind of fil filtration straw. Third dynasty of Ur became a patrimonial state in which the monarch served as a father figure who guided his children along a proper path toward prosperity. Under Shilugi's reign, a 250 km or 155 miles long wall was built to keep the Semitic speaking tribes out. Shulgi's son, grandson and great grandson all renovated and strengthened the wall to keep those they called the barbarians out, but ultimately to no avail. The neighboring Elam breached the wall and marched on Ur. After a severe famine resulting from climate change and the overuse of the land, many migrated. Amongst them is thought to be Abraham, the patriarch who left Ur to settle in the land, land of Canaan. The Sumerians believed the universe was created out of chaos and human-like gods were called into being to rule over the earth. Enki and his half-sister Ninki proposed to create man to do the labor, so a god was put to death and his body and blood was mixed with clay to create the first human being. The first man was created in Eden and in the epic of Gilmesh, the Eden is mentioned as the garden of the gods and is located somewhere in Mesopotamia between the Tigris and the Euphrates rivers. Uh, sound familiar any? Initially, Human beings were unable to reproduce, so they were modified without the approval of Enki's brother Enlil, and a conflict between the gods began. Enlil became the adversary of man, and man served the gods and went through much hardship and suffering. The father of these gods, the god of gods, was called Anu, from which the term Anunnaki comes, and so we come to the end of this part and the beginning of the next. We will discuss the Anunnaki in more detail next week. I left something, if I left something out, or you have something to add, don't hesitate to do so. Your opinions and thoughts are much appreciated, so leave your comments below. But remember, be respectful, because there are real people with real feelings on the other side. If you have enjoyed this vid, you can like and share and subscribe. And I have my You Decide channel you might want to check out. And from my corner of this ancient world to yours, I hope to see you next time. Bye.